We just got done gapping our rings and now we're down to a starter crank. We are going to plastic gauge our crank. It isn't the best way, but it is a way. For what I want to do is just verify some things. I'm trying to... Anyways, there's some red, thin, what they call plastic gauge. And you'll see, you see that? And you just cut it to length and then put your main caps over it. And I put one on every main cap. So we want to see what our clearance is. So we look at torque specs. We're going to have to do the end. We're going to work ourselves out 15 foot pounds and then do the outer 15 foot pounds, work it out. And then we got to do some torque to angling. We're not going to put it in our side because we're not torquing it down permanently. We just want to see what this plastic gauge is going to squish to. So let me get. So we got everything torqued to 15 foot pounds. And now we're going to use this tool I got from Summit. And what you pretty much do is you put it, it's a half inch drive to a half inch drive and I adapted it. You put it on the bolt you want, you, you put it against the ledge and you reset it to zero and then it's going to twist as it gets to that angle. So I'm going to do that for every one of these. Our first one's 80 degrees and then there's, uh, I think, 50 degrees on the outers. Anyways, you, use your torque specs, but I'm going to get these torqued up and... And let's see what our plastic gauge says. Okay, so we're all torqued up. We still see our plastic gauge. I'm trying to, what we got going on here? Can't really tell. So let's, I'm gonna use a impact. I'm gonna loosen all these up and we're gonna start pulling caps and looking. Okay, we have everything loose. Let's make a little space. See if I can do this on camera. I got something I'm curious of. So, things loose. Let me see if I can. No, I'm going to need two hands, so let me let's take them all out. Okay, so those are off, and this is what it looks like. You plastic the gauge, here's your mark. See that? And it just squishes it down. And what you're supposed to do is you go here, you're supposed to look at what your tolerance is, and you, you match it up. So it's not even compressed to that marker. You're not going to find... The right spacing. Well, you know what, one more. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work because the green stuff does a little bit different. Let's see, we're supposed to want this three thousandths here. That's what you want. Nowhere even close, even if the green is what we're supposed to use. I don't want to use this because I don't want to take the chance of uh, maybe the greens is a little bit thinner or thicker. But as you can see. We want three, oh, that's millimeters. Let's switch over here. We want three thousandths. We're nowhere even close to that. You see that? And the reason why is, when I took this crank to be inspected, the machine shop that I took it to, which is, uh, never mind, we ain't gonna say that. Uh, these are standard bearings. Let's see if I can show you. These are, Tri-metal bearings by Cleave Light. No, these are King. I think these are King. Anyways, and you can see right there that says standard. This crank's been already cut 1010. And standard bearings were in it. This was a disaster waiting to happen. And I'm gonna stop there before I say anything else. So here we are, video two, probably part two. I have took the crank out of the engine. Today we are putting in new rod bearings. In fact, let me get the box and I'll show you what we're putting in. So the, here's the box. You can see the part number is the MB5013HP010. So it's King Bearings. These bearings are a bimetal, and I'll show you. Made in Israel, that's interesting. So bimetal. I'll show you the difference. This came out of number one upper. This is the bearing from King, bimetal. From what I understand, it is a aluminum coated steel backed bearing. This is a tri-metal. This is racing. This is a, I think it's tin nickel copper is the coating. Racing. From what? I've gathered, and I'm, I feel pretty confident after talking to several friends with these bearings, 
they're, they're racing the application with extra clearance. You're going to lose whole oil pressure and they wear out a lot quicker. They are forgiving though. They will take a little bit more abuse and they won't wear out your crank. But here's the reason why I didn't go with these. You will have to change them quicker because they fatigue. Therefore, when something goes wrong, well, I hope nothing goes wrong. This is what manufacturers use in most applications. They started using these since the 90s. If it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. And that's what we went with. So let's look at some admin data, I guess. You can see these are stamped 1010 right here. Do you see that? It's made with the sun. So we know these are 10 over. And they're king right there. You can see their king symbol. Here's that upper bearing. So these are cleave light 77s. You see the date manufacturer. And you can see it says standard. And there's the upper bearing. Okay, so I went through and really cleaned out the crank because it came from a machine shop. Everything goes back to the customer. It is his fault in the end. Unfortunately, right? It's going to be your, your problem, you know. So, and that's exactly where we're at. So I took a, a wire brush uh, that we use for cleaning straws. It has now been donated to Rocket Garage Service because it won't go back in the house. But we went through every hole, made sure we didn't have no trash. Then we took a uh, air and we cleaned everything out, wiped it down, used some parts wash fluid, rinsed it. We're all good. So we got it seated. We got our bottoms on. Okay, so we had everything down. I torqued it down. And I just loosened them up. I'm about to take the first cap off. Let's see what our squish is. Okay, our first glance, we definitely squeezed it down, didn't we? That is a lot tighter. So you can definitely see on our main bearing there. You know what, let me get another main uh, bearing off the previous one, let's look at the difference. Okay, so here's the previous bearing and here's our new squish. So let me get, you can see this, it hardly squeezes down at all, if any. And this one actually, we got a tight tolerance. So let me get a the, the tool, the little measuring tool and compare it. Okay, and so this is all you do. Let me get it lined up. You can see we're right around two thousandths. So which we wanted between two and three. So there we are, we're at two thousandths. I'm gonna go ahead and check them all, make sure they're all the same and go from there. 